What's up, Internet? Welcome back to Octopath Traveler, and today I'm very happy to say that we're finally, finally going to look at my favorite out of the eight main characters of the game, Hanit. Hanit was the very first character I ever used, and honestly, I wanted to find as many ways to make her as fun and as powerful as possible, and I think we've struck an even balance with the War Master secondary job. Like before, if you guys are unfamiliar, if you want to get a secondary job, you have to go to an optional shrine area, beat the boss that's there, they're harder than the main story ones from at least chapter one to chapter four and once you kill them you'll have access to war master war master is really really cool because it's quite tanky and focuses completely on physical damage as you can see on the screen right now you can use each of the different weapon types available to us and that's exactly what we're trying to look at over here so in terms of the equipment that hans is using she uses all the abilities so we're going to look at in order where i got these weapons so the first one is going to be the forbidden blade just like with every weapon or nearly every weapon in in Octopath Traveler, if you have your abilities which increase your stealth, which is the evasive maneuvers for the scholars, and the evil ward for the clerics, you can actually just sneak up to the little areas and get these weapons. So the Forbidden Blade, you can actually get these in the Refuge Ruins, which are near the North River for Traverse. I'll actually well, like, just show you guys right now what that looks like. Right over down into the bottom right corner, you're going to find Riverford. I believe you have to go into the Quarry Crest first. Venture your way south, head towards here, and then you'll find the Refuge Ruins. Actually, right beside the town when you go there. You get yourself this really, really powerful sword. Uh, I believe it is the highest value, but it comes with a little bit of a problem, and that increases the target's physical attack. But the boss that we're going to be fighting against for today's demonstration is purely a caster, so this is perfect for us. Next one is going to be the Jade Lance. I believe you get this one in the Everhold shop. Someone please correct me if I'm wrong, but you do buy this one in a shop. And the Viper Dagger you can find inside of the Purgatory... Uh, hold on, let's look at this one again. The Viper Dagger, I believe, as I can recall correctly, it's on the op opposite side of the map of this horde. It is... Yes, it's going to be the Forest of Purgation inside of a chest. Again, you can sneak your way towards it. The Viper Dagger is quite nice because it occasionally poisons the target. And of course, the Golden Axe, which I've already gone in depth, but for those of you guys that aren't familiar, you can get this in Alfin's starting area, and then you have to kind of use provoke to get someone out of the way and then go inside of that house to pickpocket grandpa for like six the three percent chance of pickpocketing this is the improved bow of the eagle this one actually does require killing a boss before you can access it it is found quite closely to grandport in the lock of the lost king once you get and um get into the area there's a boss with i believe like 20 to thirty thousand hp kill that boss or catch that one if that's what you want to do with hanit and you're going to get the improved bow of the eagle which has a fairly decent amount of physical attack and elemental attack if that's what you're in for and the giant's club this one you can find when you're doing ophelia's chapter four this is right over by the obsidian or not the obsidian the ebony grotto right by the uh, the mill area so i'll quickly look at the map for you guys and it's going to be right over here like right beside the whisper whisper mill do ophelia's quest and you'll have access to this area so yeah you can pretty much get all the weapons here these are not necessarily the best overall i'm pretty sure they're best one there are better ones out there i just have yet to find them. The next one is going to be the Platinum Helm and the Vendetta Coat. The Vendetta Coat, I've decided to use this one so I can give myself more HP. And I believe I am actually, I think I'm really forgoing using Saving Grace, the Cleric skill for this particular fight. I'll probably double check that. But yeah, the Vendetta Coat you can get from doing Therian's quests, I believe, after finishing the. No, no, sorry, was it the Vendetta Coat? Pretty sure it was a Vendetta Coat. No, 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 sorry, no, that was my mistake. That was the Primrose Chapter 4, I believe. So yeah, pretty late game stuff, or later game stuff, as it were. A protective blade Bracelet and a Protective Ring, just so I can give myself as def much defense as possible. So yeah, that pretty much about does it for the equipment. There's so much to look for when it comes to War Master and all the cool stuff that they give you. In terms of the abilities that the War Master gives you, there's some pretty nice ones. Extra experience is extremely valuable, and honestly, you're probably going to want to be carrying this for the majority of the time. And equipping it right before a big battle styleport defense and fortitude are like all based on defense i'm, I'm trying to aim mostly for offense for this particular fight but styleport defense is cool because it increases your physical defense but then fortitude gives you more damage to lower your hp as i'm not entirely sure but i predict that it's going to be stackable with the last stand ability for the apothecary but uh, we'll, we'll look at that at a later date and finally there is physical prowess which augments physical attack and defense during battle this is definitely your most important skill and it does more damage i believe in comparison with the warrior skill which increases your strength with um 
or your physical attack. So yeah, these are the ones that we're running with. Of course, like usual, Saving Grace and SP Saver are my favorite skills right now, uh, so I'm not really looking to replace these two anytime soon. And then there's going to be Patience. Patience is going to be really fun because we're essentially going to be rolling the dice as we play around with the Weapon Master, or with the War Master, as it was, or War Smith. I can't even remember what the name of the, the class is. Uh, yep, Warmaster. The thing about this particular skill, this particular patient skill, is that it lets you have a 25% chance of acting again, and that's going to be really cool because that is what the playstyle is going to be. We're going to be spamming away with all of our different weapons, and that's exactly what this skill is going to help us do. Of course, the next uh, party setup that we have, I'm actually going to be using another secret job because that's going to make this boss fight a little bit easier. More or less what I'm used to using, but for those of you guys that are unfamiliar, I've given Theory an insult to injury, probably not going to make much use of that right now. SP Saver, inner, inner Strength, and Saving Grace, just to give him as much support capabilities as possible. And I want to increase Ophelia's HP and, like, you know, have the SP. SP Saver, you're going to find him on, I mean, have on everyone because I like the long, drawn-out fights. And then Cyrus, I've just boosted his damage as per usual. It's all about survivability with this setup that we're using, and honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. Quickly go over the overview of our of our party classes. So, of course, War Master on Hanit. Uh, Therian is going to be a cleric. Ophelia as a scholar because, you know, more elements could be a good thing. And then Cyrus the Sorcerer. The infamous Cyrus the Sorcerer is going to be making a return again. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the demonstration and we're going to fight against the star seer all right so here we are at the shrine of the star seer now i personally find this particular boss to be quite easy of course this might be due to the fact that we're a bit over leveled for this particular area but all things considered this is a pretty easy one to manipulate due to the fact that we already have a sorcerer and a war master on our sides we're going to be making plenty of use out of all the different abilities to weaken the guard of this enemy and honestly that's going to force this particular enemy to just not do anything to us okay so we have cyrus already starting off with the uh the confusion which is just great we have ourselves a physical reflection meaning that my option of using war master is going to be a little bit difficult to do this buff does go away once you inflict a break guard on this enemy so that's going to be okay we quickly just use this herb of clarity and switch back over to Hanit. Now, this particular enemy has a weakness to fire and ice and sword, but unfortunately sword will be unavailable to us right now. So the best thing that we can do is just have everyone, yeah, probably get ourselves ready for this one. So yeah, here we go. This is gonna be a really, really tricky start. This is actually like the worst start that we could ever have for a fight like this. Honestly, if you if you want, you could just reset if you're relying on War Master. But if you're like me and you want to kind of power through it, then by all means, Elfo Star is gonna come out. And what I'm planning on doing now is I actually want to kind of just get a little bit greedy and just spam Blizzard. This is still the early stages. She's not gonna attack twice per turn just yet. So that's what we're doing. Okay, now Song of the Star Seer is going to make things even more difficult on our ends, but I actually don't mind that too much. The reason why is because now we can set up the break and Hanitz will now be free to do the physical attacks. So, like I said, you, making use of Sorcerer and Scholar in tandem with each other and War Master means you'll be able to hit many times and you'll see why pretty soon. So, okay, we're going to try to make use of the overheals. I, I, I always try to drive it home that the point of having two clerics is to help with the overheals and with the Elfric's auspices. So, the cool thing about War Master is you can hit multiple times. This is just like the arrow rain that the Hunter has, but since this is a single target, it's not random which target you're picking. It's going to be the same guy over and over again. So, yeah, that's going to be the most useful part about it. And now Ophelia can do this. Elfric's auspices with War Master. It's not necessarily the most viable tactic, but it's great fun. And in a fight where the enemy is weak to sword, it's extremely valuable. So, you know what? We're going to have another heal coming our way, I believe. Uh, yeah, let's we'll go ahead and do a heal more. Another option you can do with your clerics is to use a reflect on your team. And that's going to give you even more damage, or at least help weaken the break for when the next turn happens. So again, weakness to fire and ice, make sure you use those ones to make use of that elemental skill that the sorcerer has. And now Hanit can go full boost with the lion, Guardian Lion Dog. Unfortunately, the take aim is no longer applied to us anymore, but it's nice that we're able to hit so many times twice. So this is going to be some good stuff. Here we go, for second round. You missed so many times, but I don't care. It's just a lot of fun to watch Hanit just go to town on this girl. 
Okay, so the thing about having two turns is that one turn will be spent changing the weaknesses, and we got lucky. Sword is going to be another one that we're going to be able to hit, so that's great. I like that. Okay, so usually in a phase like this, there's a good chance that light could be the element of choice. So how about we go ahead and use holy light to make sure. Okay, so that didn't work out quite in our favor. What we could also do is just, yeah, just kind of go for more heals, I suppose. May as well. And I see that we might not necessarily be not uh, might not necessarily be able to pull off a break on this next turn, so I'm gonna use the leg hold trap to force our enemy to go last. All right, and I'll, yeah, unfortunately we do have to waste that a little bit. I, I should have just gone ahead and used that to make use of my auspices, but I wanted to make sure that it was last just in case. And how about we we'll, we'll use a scholar skill for this one. We'll build up the BP and wait for the next turn. And you'll see that she has 149,000 HP, so that's great. That's great for us. Okay, start things off by, I guess, yeah, passing over the Elfrix over down to Hanit to make sure that she can keep going. Remember, increase the amount of 10 by 3, so that's exactly what we're trying to look for here. And uh, we're going to go for another heal, because we can and we should. Okay, we got Hanit the overheal, so that's going to be perfect. And... Yeah, Guardian Lion's Og. Let's see how many hits we can get with this one. This actually could potentially be a break, but even if it doesn't, we do know that she is weak to electric or lightning, but uh, that's great. That's absolutely great in our favor. I'm not going to go for the burst yet, or the boost quite yet. I'm going to use a Tenitris. Tenitris is going to hit three times as per usual, and the next turn it's going to be even more damage. So unfortunately, patience has never kicked in, but when it does, it's going to be magical. Hopefully, hopefully it kicks in right before this one, actually. There we go. More Guardian Lion Dogs. This is a really, really fun skill to use. I'm probably not going to use the Divine skill of War Master. It's a really, really cool skill because it uses all the different weapon class abilities all in one stroke, which is really, really, really something. Uh, you know, we can use the Reflective Veil right now if we were so inclined. Actually, no. Let's go Thief and then share SP with Hanit to make sure she can continue firing off. And I think next turn I will go for another SP steal. Yeah, go for another SP steal, and then pass it over to Cyrus, because I know that's going to happen. Worst case scenario, we're just going to use some plums. I, I don't mind doing the plums at all. And you know what? We have the Scholar ability, so let's use a Lightning Blast just to stack on that extra damage. Okay, so what's going to happen here is that she's going to switch, and if we're lucky, it's going to be arrows. And this is why I like having a War Master on, uh, on Hanit, because the arrow rain is really, really good. Unfortunately, no, it's only the one thing, but thankfully, we know exactly what this element is, and that's going to be the Dark Element. Uh, all you need to do is just do one cast of a Sorcery and a Shadow Stone if you have one. I would recommend using a Shadow Stone, uh, most powerful one if you can, just to make this fight less a little less. And, okay, Ophelia, do you know what? We will expend one boost so that we can overheal Hanit. I think that would be a very, very good idea. And do you know what we can also do is that we can waste a little bit more time on this turn because we know that Cyrus will break on the very next one. So do you know what? Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, heal more for the entire party, overheal as best as we can, as per usual, keep things nice and safe. And, um, yeah, okay, do you know what? Let's go... And yeah, just use another Lightning Guardian Dog. There's not, not really much else we can do. There's plenty of other skills that they have, but it's just really powerful versions of using a singular weapon, which is nice, but it's not something that we can totally make use of at the moment. Okay, so what I could do is I'm going to use an item. Yes, I will use an item to heal the SP of another character. And that's going to be Therian, actually. I would like very much for Therian. As, you know what? Let's go for the entire team. I would like to have uh, Therian just a little bit more insurance, if that's possible. So we're down to our last one, and uh, I'm going to use Therian to cast the auspices on this character. So, I'm going to switch over to the sword, War Master Skills, Guardian Lion Dog. Nothing really we can do about it right now. I'm saving up that BP so that once we get the break, we can just go to town. Alright, so what is the next thing that we could potentially do? One other thing I could is have Ophelia use... Okay, you know, we'll have a Reflect on Hanit. Just because Hanit has probably the, like, the least magical defense out of all of us. And yeah, so I can't really use a Thief skill right now. I have to use... I have to, I have to refresh the Auspices, or the uh, the Elfrix, so we're gonna do that. Want to make sure that Hanit is constantly spamming these sword attacks because there's gonna be plenty of times we'll, where this enemy is going to be weak to sword or going to be weak to bow, and both of them are very favorable outcomes for us. 
just like that, waiting for the exact last turn to do the break to really shift the momentum in our favor. And I'm going to go ahead and then burst. Here we go, Guardian Lion Dog at plus three boost. Yeah, that's that's a pretty nice stuff. Hitting 1500 per hit. Uh, sometimes it misses a lot, sometimes it doesn't. I was just, yeah, but either way, you're doing plenty of damage overall. Okay, what else can I do? I, I suspect that this character would like to do another one. Another spell. So the thing about this spell that this particular boss uses is that it hits three times and oh, for each character, which is very annoying. So you're going to need to have at least three Reflex to block them all. But if you don't have that, then that's fine too. Uh, go share SP with Cyrus to make sure he's topped up. And this probably might even be enough for the entire battle. One thing I also wanted to note is the fact that this particular boss only attacks with magic attacks, so the physical increased attack buffs that I've been giving her will not factor at all for this fight. It's really, really useful. Okay, what are you going to do? I believe one of those weaknesses is going to be a bow, but I would like to know for sure. Let's see what we got here, though. Got ourselves this. Yeah, two hits from the Reflect. Not really much else I can do about that. I will burn one boost for Ophelia to make sure that Therian can get some good heals. Perfect, that's an overheal. Okay, I just want to make sure that one of those attacks isn't knife. Okay, that's perfect. So I'm going to make the assumption, a very bold assumption, that this is a weakness to arrows. Perfect. That's exactly what I'd like to see. This is going to be a weakness to arrows, and you're going to be casting it twice, thanks again to Elfrix. Nice. So that's, that's going to be pretty good for us, I think. Unfortunately, there is going to be an extra turn coming from this enemy, but honestly, I'm, I'm more than confident that we can we can tank this. So, we're going to use... let's use... Glacius. Why not? Use this Glacius. You can see all that physical buff that she's getting. That's really, really nice. Okay, Shooting Star is going to hit us a bunch of times. Honestly, the amount of damage that she does isn't so bad. Granted, I am fairly high leveled in comparison to how I should be when I'm doing this, but yeah, it, it has worked out pretty well for us. Okay, I see that Therian's low, but I and they both both of my clerics have enough to give us another Elfrix, which will, which is something that we need desperately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have Therian do the honors of giving them over, and then Ophelia is gonna burn another boost to heal us. I think that's probably the safest option that we have right now. So again, um, not us not using the veil like I was thinking of doing. I'm gonna use the auspices of Elfric. So that's gonna be an, an additional three turns for us. And yeah, again, burn this, give ourselves a bit of a heal. I've actually noticed that there have been no patients kicking in. That's a little disheartening. I was hoping for a little bit more. Unless I did something weird and unequipped it, which would be just as embarrassing. I'll, uh, I'll have a look at that. Okay, I see... Yeah, you know what? We're gonna wait one more turn. One more turn so I can give myself the, uh, the additional boost. Okay. We're doing pretty solidly for this fight right now. Like I said, by combining Warmaster with... The um, combining Warmaster with Sorcerer means that you'll have a lot of momentum in your favor, which is really, really nice. Okay, again, go for this. Yeah, go, we'll, we'll go for more damage. I'm tempted to analyze just to make sure, but again, we have all this BP saved up. We might as well expend it. No, and we don't have to worry about overheal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply one more Reflective Veil on Hanit, because Hanit is the star of the show right now, and she deserves special treatment. She's also my favorite character. I really, really like her. I uh, She was the very first character I used, and the very first character that I finished her chapter four with. So that was nice. All right, how many more hits can we do? We're not quite in the red zone, I believe. We're going to have to double check that. So again, go for another Guardian Lion Dog, see if many of those hits. That's a pretty fair amount, I think. 1,500 per hit is nothing to sneeze at. Okay, so show me. Alright, so now we got that weakness to sword back in. And yeah, we're gonna have to... We're gonna go for a full heal on the party, I think. Which is fine, because again, because we have the Guardian Lion Dog, I think 7 is more than enough. Oh yeah, also again, we have the Sorcerers, what am I even saying? Let us use... Yeah, we're gonna have to use a heal more for the entire party, and another one coming from Therian, because I want to make sure that he has enough to last the next turn. I just give him the overheal, that's all. Therian is the squishiest member of our party. Uh, well, Cyrus is pretty squishy too, but his magic resist and the items that I gave him gave him a little bit more of an edge this time around. So again, go for your War Master skills, Guardian Lion Dog. We're in the red zone right now, so this is pretty, pretty solid. And we're not even letting her do any attacks either, which is great. 
That's what I love about the Elfric. I, I believe Elfric is going to be our ticket to finding the absolutely most broken setup in the entire game. And uh, I hope to be around when that happens. It'll be it'll be really, really nice. Let's go, Ventus. We don't see Ventus enough on this channel. Here we go. This is this is going extremely well. I'm, I'm glad. So, yeah, Guardian Lion Dog. I see that Therian... Therian's doing fine. I'm going to use an SP Thief for Therian because he's looking a little bit low. Yeah, we might as well. Like, we're in the red zone, but we can't get complacent just yet. So we're gonna go ahead and steal SP, bring him back up to a good amount, and thankfully we're lucky for the dagger for that one. It's a, it's a tiny bit random for the most part, though. You'll have coverage if you're using both War Master and Sorcerer, because they have all the elements and all the weapons. So yeah, we have to go ahead and give ourselves the, the Elfrix, giving it over to Hanit. And we're gonna go for a little boost with the Sorcerer using Tenitris this time. What do we got? Not quite at the KO just yet, but I can smell it. It's like it's, it's right around the corner. This is where the fight really, really becomes exciting. All right, so he's gonna go ahead, or she's gonna go ahead and beat Dark Elements again. We have not very many options for this particular stage of the fight, except just to use a Shadow Soul Stone and then one cast from Cyrus. But I think that's gonna be just about all we need. So uh, again, Hanet, you're gonna do the honors with another Guardian Lion Dog. It'd be great if this KO'd. It'd be a nice, nice little picture for us. And you know what? We're gonna do one. Yeah, oh, we're gonna do. We don't even need to do a boosted heal with Theron. We can just use a normal one because this next turn is going to be a break. Awesome. And yeah, and I think Therian can go ahead and just cast it twice since this is a break. So again, here comes the Tenebrae. This might even kill, actually. Like, Yes, that is exactly that's absolutely what I like to see. Hanitz as a war master is really really cool because you can easily weaken and whittle down your foes and break their guards. Once you do that, it'll be easier for you to catch enemies. I kind of want to do that too, but unfortunately, um, as powerful as beasts can be, when it comes to bosses like this where they have high defense, it's actually better just to use the war master's ability in comparison to beasts, which makes sense considering that cost SP. But yeah, it, it's just a really really cool secondary option for. Hanitz. It, and it just looks really phenomenal with the in-game sprite. I just love it really so much because it just goes to show how versatile Hanitz can be. Really, I guess one strategy that you guys can do is just capture all the enemies with all the different elements and then use that in tandem with all this. So she can be a jack of all trades and pretty decent damage as we saw right there. 1500 doesn't seem like much, but considering how often she can hit 1500s with her attacks is just a lot of fun to use. And honestly, that's what I look forward to in most Japanese RPGs. It's just picking up a character and then building them, not necessarily because I think they'll be particularly good, but because I just like using them all the time and I want to find whatever options I can to make them better. So guys, thanks very much for joining me on Hanitz the War Master. This is a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to using this in the future, probably even in streams. There's a stream coming up very, very soon. I hope you guys can show up on that one. But until then, I look forward to looking at more weird build party setups. And since we've already cleared all the, uh, all the secret bosses for the secret jobs in my game file right now, we're gonna try to look at different options for what we can do with kind of carrying out these new character build overviews. Until then, see you guys next time.